Hi YouTube fans. I have another homebrew here. Uh, this is a Hefeweizen that I brewed uh, in early May. Well, I guess second week of May. It's a true Bavarian. Well, it's not true Bavarian. It's not Bavarian, but it's a Bavarian style Hefeweizen. What I did is I created a recipe uh, from scratch and I made 20 gallons, which is what my new brew system does. Actually, I made a video on it. And uh, what I did is I split the batch into four fermenters. And then I used two different yeast strains total. But I did two of, these, you know, two of the same strain and two have another strain. So that's something I haven't done in a while. I used to do that all the time when I made 10-gallon batches. I would uh, experiment with different strains to see, well, what's this flavor, you know, how's this going to taste with this strain in it? So I'd either make two five gallons or three, 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 about that. And uh, so I learned, you know, what, what the right yeast was. So anyway, uh, run to go over the recipe here real quick. I used a, about 80%, look at the recipe right now, is a combination of Pilsner and white wheat. I used some Care Munich malt and some Munich. And then for the hops, uh, what I have here is inaccurate, but I used uh, some pearl and a little bit of warrior, mostly pearl though for the bittering. They were kind of old, so I just wanted to get rid of them. And there's no bitterness in beer at all though. I mean, even though it said the IBU is going to be really high, I knew they wouldn't be. For the yeast, I used uh, two different white strains, 3056 and 3638. Generally, the 3068 strain is what most people use because the banana clove is more dominant, but I don't like strong banana clove. And then the other thing I did is in two of the fermenters, I added some vanilla extract. Uh, vanilla beans were pretty expensive, and this is pure vanilla extract, which I read mixed results on it. So uh, out of those, I mentioned you know, I, I split the split four ways. These two and these two have the same yeast, right? Well, so out of that, this one is non-vanilla, this one's vanilla, non-vanilla, vanilla. That's how I did it, so I can try both strains with or without vanilla. Okay, so ferment for about two weeks, uh, right, right about there, and then I just caked it today. I actually let the fermenter cold crash for about, no, well, about two days. And then I charge it up and, you know, give it a good, good, good uh, macarbonation. Uh, here's the beer. Here's what it looks like. Let's see if you can get a decent view of it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. It is a deep burnt orange color. Now, Beersmith shows it as a medium to a little bit dark orange, not this dark. Well, Beersmith's never right for me. But it's very cloudy. It might clear up over time. Hard to say. But I take what Beersmith's a great with the gray salt. Um, this came out at, I think, each one had a little bit different alcohol content. They came out about, uh, this one's a little bit lower, this is about 4% alcohol, the other one's about 5%. And unfortunately, I could not get the temperature down because it was just so hot in here. Uh, even with fans blowing, I couldn't get below 80 sometimes, which is extremely hot for beer. Ideally, you want, for some strange, you want 65 to 70. Some days I had down that, you know, down around 70, other days it was higher than that. I did the best I could. Um, a concern with high temperatures is fusel alcohols, and uh, sometimes you get nasty fruit flavor in compounds from the yeast. I didn't get any of that this time. I lucked out. But I fermented hot before because I couldn't control the temperature, and sometimes that's pretty good. So uh, this is a medium body beer, and it's all grain. Uh, I'm very pleased with how well it turned out. I wish it was a little lighter in color, but I'm not going to complain. I'm still pretty happy with it. And I love the cloudiness. I just wish it was a little lighter in color, but that's not a huge deal. All right. Let's see what she tastes like. Light banana. Maybe a touch of bubble gum in there. A little bit of sweet, possibly fruit. And uh, that's about all I get right now. Um, I don't get clove. I've never been able to pick up that flavor. The sweetness may be coming from the wheat or possibly the Care Munich. The Munich should give a malty backbone, but I'm really not noticing that, at least yet. It may come in later. 
Uh, this one does not have the vanilla in it, so of course I'm not going to taste that. It's a little more on the subtle side as far as the yeast flavor, or as far as the uh, banana flavors are concerned. The particular strain in this one is not one of my favorites. I don't not like it, otherwise I wouldn't have used it, but it's just not one I prefer. But it's all right. I just wanted to try this new recipe with a few different strains. And my favorite one is actually 3056. That's my go-to. That's why you made my Dunkel Weizen with and a few other beers. Anyway, so uh, here's another look at it. Um, what you see there is actually pretty accurate. Cloud, cloudy as hell. But yeah, back here looks really dark. It's really not. So anyway, I'm going to keep sipping away at this. And I'll try it after it's uh, not so green like Kermit. I mean, this is about as green as it gets. It's been caked for about an hour. <laughs> so, all right. Well, this is overall a pretty decent German Hefeweizen or style, not true German, right? But happy with how it turned out. So I'll let age a little bit more and I keep sampling away. Hey, well, that's all I have for now. Prost.